exuberant animal foot camp out here in the Misty Mountains. Just uh, following our feet back into reconnection, back into our soul. And there's all kinds of, of natural gifted sticks out here in the earth that we can pick up and begin to, to stretch ourselves out of our chronic condition. Every stick is different. We can use this for strength training by just holding it at an angle. So it's getting to the stick and allowing it to teach you and begin to explore. You establish a rapport with it. Pretty soon you start working on your endurance with it, your grip, dancing with it. And at that challenging point is where you really begin to integrate into balancing with the new movement and form that you're exploring. As we get into tree weaving with ropes, they're very useful ropes, they're usually about eight feet long. Uh, they began as toe straps down in the mechanical world. And we have them made with very uh, bigger loops on them. So you can hook them around your arms when your hands get tired and find all kinds of ways to play with these. You can do tug of war, you can do jump rope. Uh, with this one rope, you can begin to weave and cultivate your own practice. You can see others in a gym and those places and see some movements and form. But we're always about stepping out further. Um, the word exuberance is two words. It means ex uberare. Ex is Latin for move out. Uberare is fertility, is growth. And the word animal is animus, means spirited. And so we're on a foot pursuit of animal exuberance how to find these places out here that are full of the exuberance, how to train with them and gather them, and then take them back down into the sitting walls, into the city streets, into the alienation, and begin to weave integration back. There's simple little tools that allows you to explore the complexity, allows you to establish a movement in form so you can begin to make sense of your thinking and your heart, your feeling, and begin to reconnect with the earth. I have a couple of stones like so. I got a nice log here. Now I'm toning with stone. So you got movements you have in gym, I hear the solar fire, the sun, and all kinds of stuff and using this tree limb. And get into fluid motion. And the stone begins to ground our practice out even more. We designed these bags. It has two short hand holds, two longer hand holds. And I can use this, carry stuff in a pack this way. Most of you probably done some backpacking. Trouble with backpacking, you're, you're in one form all the time. It's constantly pulling on one way. With a bag like this, you can now switch it over to the side and shift it around to this side. And so now I have a versatile pack where if I integrate two of these, I can do them like a set of saddlebags, distributing my weight all the way around me. And staying away from the weight belt. When you pull that weight belt in, you are restricting and confining the movement of your hips and your soles. So I can dump water in a bucket of heat up and take a warm bath. It has a waterproof bottom. So now I can take stones and put them inside the bag and I can start doing everything in your gym, but you can do more with this bag and work out a more diverse movements instead of being hold, held strictly by a bar in these linear or cable systems. I can also use these bags to really work in rotation, wide strips. Now I can, I can do all kinds of movements by working with my forearms, squats, working my leg muscles. I can work these short motions like so. I am now changing the whole leverage of my body. If I keep this arm straight, this one curling, oh, that's very, very nice, but I want more resistance. All I have to do is pull my hand in and that becomes heavier. Now I can work out motion and movement, working from leverage. And I can get in very articulated movements leads to artful. The artful body will express the mindful body. So many kinds of movements. 
I can keep this up high, use this to work motion like this, but what's really unique about it is now I can hold this out, really stretch myself out and hold one still, hold the other one there, and I still have resistance working the entire time. I can get rocking going. Five grip and grins, following our own feet, our own souls back into reconnection with our exuberant animal, remembering your feet. Second one, getting the tactile experience up in your front paws of using sticks to train. Third one is tree weaving with ropes. We begin to not only weave the ropes with our own bodies, we learn that power of meditation that comes from the weave. And then the next one is toning with stone and building strength. And strength is about detachment. It's always about detachment. You must have a strong grip in order to detach. And our people are losing their grip of the earth, losing their connection. And in the fifth practice, your disciplines of yoga and tai chi and science and reading and, and whatever your discipline is, and then to take it on a quest further out into a place like this we call Misty Mountain. Open yourself up to the teaching. Once you begin a practice of stepping out of the insulation and alienation, you begin to care. And caring for the earth and caring for your own walk and aligning your talk and your walk. Once you begin to care, it takes on another form. The word sounds so closely alike. It is share. Once you care, in order for that caring to continue, you must share the practice. You must share it. And that's what we do out here. We bring our grandmothers, we bring our grandmothers out here, we bring our young out here, for they have to experience this as deep as you strong ones do. A holistic practice is mind, body, spirit. You hear that until you're about ready to puke. There is more to a holistic practice. Mind, body, spirit, land, ancestors, and tribe and community. And if we have to, to stay in the city and confine our movements and form in a sedentary existence, where all you're concerned about is me, 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 and you forgot to take that M and flip it around and bring in the we, then you are not in a holistic practice because you have forgot tribe. If your grandmothers, your grandfathers, the young ones have trouble on the trail, then you can take sticks and build stretchers and carry them up. You can get creative in all these forms. The call of our time now is reconnection. And you need a strong grip to do that. And when your grip gets strong, in order to release it, you need to grin. And that grip and that grin need to ground. My name is Mick Dodge. I hope you contact whoever you need to contact to get a hold.